Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show. Yes, and we are live. We are live, right? We are live and we are alive. Julian, are we live? Perfect. We always have to ask because, you know, there was this one time when we were not live and then we we got traumatized for life. Uh, oh my I God. would say that it was even one time, two times. <laughs> Who's counting, <laughs> you know? No, but we are live. That's the most important part. So welcome, everyone. I hope you are tuned in and you are listening to us and not to the African uh, drums, <laughs> because we also heard that sometimes there is a different show that is uh, like uh, trying to steal our uh, frequency and you can hear some weird 10 seconds bits of African drums. I'm actually really flattered that someone wants to steal our airtime, Marta. What do you think? I think this is pretty amazing. It is. And uh, I would like to be able to hear how it sounds. Me too. Me too, because actually on the recording, when we get the recording afterwards, we we don't hear the drums. We only have heard from people who are listening to us live that they can hear the drums. And apparently it's only when you stream it via internet. So guys, if we will disappear for a couple of seconds, or if you will hear African drums or any other exotic yet plain instrument, please stay tuned because we will back in. We just have some some technical challenges sometimes. Many times. <laughs> no, but today, uh, first Christmas mir miracle happened. Our intro was played from the beginning to an end with no disturbances, thanks to our wonderful technician, Julian, who, by the way, yesterday become a grandma. So congratulations, she just told us. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we are very joyful in a studio and we are in a very high spirits. Um, that's why uh, maybe it's actually a great synchronicity that we are making the Christmas live special, Marta. What do you think? I think that the syn synchronicity rocks. It's December and we are doing a Christmas live show. On 7th of December because, because we celebrate Christmas earlier, right? Yeah, actually, you are running uh, some Christmas dinner tomorrow. So yes, that's true. Christmas is on. I'm running a Christmas dinner. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I am. Uh, but, you know, for some of you, Christmas actually starts very early and we will reveal all the answers you have given us to our Facebook uh, survey that we made. Like always, we asked you a couple of questions, but among those questions, we also ask you, uh, what are your favorite Christmas songs? And we will play them today. So now I would like to first play uh, the first song. And it is a song that I think many of you know and have a very nice message. This is John Lennon, Happy Christmas, War is Over. We are back indeed. So this was the very first song that we have played for you today, guys. And that was a song that was stated as a favorite song of a guy whose name is uh, yeah, David Villanueva. That's actually my boyfriend. So yeah, he, 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 he has a little bit of an upper hand here. Uh, but uh, I also like this song and Marta agreed. So we played it, uh, especially for David, especially that he is many times... Uh, He's always listening to us live. 
Yes, yeah, so definitely uh, we want to make sure that our very, how is it called, the listener that all, the, the usual, no, the, the that one that listens. The usual suspects, no, the, the regulars. The regular. The yeah. regulars. You've yes. got five options, regular. Yes, that's, uh, that's you've got five options. We are very aware that many of you cannot tune in when we are exactly live and we usually see that you are listening to the recordings of the live shows. But there are some of you who are making a very special effort and we know who you are. Hence, uh, we decided to, yeah, to actually make this nice gesture to one of our regulars. But now when I think about the usage of he's my regular, isn't this what prostitutes say? To about <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Like that's the regular. Oh no, it's like when you come to the bar all the time and barman says that's the regular. That's what I was getting at. Jesus Christ, why do I have such a weird, um, <laughs> we, we, weird associations in my head. I don't know, but at the same time, I just wanted to say if there are more regulars on that live show, please guys, write to us. We want yeah. to know who you are and we would love to connect and uh, maybe also bring you onto our live shows. So give us a hint, let us know if you are, you've got five options, live regular, because we know about the recordings part, yeah. but actually live yeah, we, we, great to know. we can track you down. No, we cannot track you down. But we, we see how many people are listening, re-listening to our podcast and, uh, and to our, uh, let's say, YouTube recordings. And thank you for our other regulars. But the live show regulars, we really want to know who you are. So if you are on Facebook, by the way, or on our website, just drop us a message, you know, on Facebook, it's enough to go on You've Got Five Options fan page and there is a chat option there so you can just send us a message. But coming back to the wonderful topic of today's live show, which is Christmas is coming because Christmas is coming, Marta, right? We cannot deny it. We know we can't. They are playing last Christmas and all I want for Christmas. Mm -hmm all the time so definitely it's christmas yes so we actually have asked you guys and we are starting today with those questions from the audience because we are making a very plot twisty episode it actually it's about making plot twist on christmas so we will start from the end because normally we are uh, revealing the uh, survey results at the end of the show so now we will start at the beginning what a freaky plot twist this time. <laughs> but um, I'm really enjoying here, okay? But thank you for this appreciative uh, voice, okay? <laughs> so are you curious about the answers we have received from our listeners? Definitely, yes. Because I have asked you guys six questions and uh, I got a lot of answers and I'm ready to share it. So... I will first start with what's your biggest nightmare before Christmas? And we have given you a couple of answers. And the answer number one that won was inevitable weight gain. So, Marta, what do you think? I think that weight gain is definitely not the Christmas gift that we are looking for on Christmas, yet we continue to get it every year. Actually, that's one of those very few things that you don't want to get. Like you really would like to have it less than more. But 36% people said that inevitable weight gain is their biggest nightmare before Christmas. So some of us actually are entering this wonderful, chillful period with a fear or sad realization that they will be a couple of kilos heavier by the end of the Christmas extravaganza. Number two biggest nightmare. Actually, we have two with 27% of the respondents is buying presents. I was one of the people who answered this one. You were? Yes, not because I don't like to buy presents, because mm -hmm. I actually do like to give gifts mm -hmm. to people. But it is because of the frenzy. It is because of the you suddenly have to do it and uh, everyone has to do it at the same time. And uh, all this is so pumped up, you know, and all the marketing around it and stuff. So that's the one that takes away actually for me, from me, part of this joy 
of yeah i i totally agree and i think it's actually a freaking nightmare although that was not what i chose but imagine that not only you have to buy all the presents for a lot of people uh, you also have to, you know, do it way up front because if you are ordering anything by mail, just say goodbye to a normal uh, delivery. You know, everything is delayed. People are walking everywhere. It's like actually sometimes, you know, I, I really am thinking either I'm buying things in November or I'm not buying at all because it's just too much. And I think it's really beautiful to give stuff. But uh, Christmas shopping gifts is just a nightmare. Now I said it. Okay. Yes. I actually think that we should start to make gifts again. Yeah, I'm so much into and I really like, I am like stuff, no more stuff, like no yeah. more toys, no more stuff. I'm so much more into experience. I'm so much more into meaning. And actually, I love this. I have seen it somewhere on Facebook, like even re-gifting things. Mm -hmm. If you have, for example, toys, your kids no longer use, I would love it for the mother planet Earth that yeah. it would be perfectly fine to re-give them to the next child instead of having to go for the same toy and buy it in the shop and produce more plastic or cut down more trees if you're into wooden uh, toys and so on. So I think it would be great plot twist if we all started to re-gift stuff instead of having to have the pressure of it has to be new what well, but what by regifting you mean like giving the toys f all that all reusing stuff it, reusing. it doesn't have to be regifting it doesn't have to be that you actually mm -hmm. got it as a gift and then you give it away you may have bought it yourself that's also perfectly fine but that it is perfectly fine to gift something that has already been used do you think you can regift boyfriends and girlfriends I guess some people may be into it, but maybe that's not a mainstream activity. Because, you know, I also come across one of the, those facts, you know, uh, that uh, this is the moment when you are going to, when there is the most breakups. And, you know, it's like you don't want to break someone's heart in December, right? Because it's kind of cruel and stuff. So how about regifting the boyfriend that you want to break up to another girl? or regifting your girlfriend. That's definitely a plot twist for Christmas. So you could go to that person that you want to break up with and say, look, I have really great present for you. I have a new girlfriend for you. I think this is a brilliant idea. I think this is the second best idea that I have ever had. And that was brilliant. It, it's like it's only positive messages. You should build a business around it and, you know, patent it. Yeah. Regiftmyboyfriend.com Regift my amazing, yeah, very good, Marta. And we came with it together. And this is only 15 minutes into the show. I wonder what other wonderful ideas we will have. Number three, or actually, it was the same number of votes, was a vision of bankruptcy by the end of the year. That that's the biggest nightmare before Christmas for 27 percent of our uh, listeners. And I was one of them because I actually do spend quite a lot of money in December. And um, and it is a tough month for me. Yes, I have to admit. And the last uh, answer with 9% was being forced to follow rules and traditions and do I don't like or believe in. So I think that this is especially in more traditional cultures, right? Like uh, or societies when you come home for Christmas and suddenly you are faced with your family that are still doing those weird things that you don't believe in or something. Um, Marta, do you have this problem? So I think that actually funny enough, it could be that some of the traditions that for some time I felt this way are actually growing on me again. Mm -hmm. So I think there are some times in life where you are more or less rebellious against, you know, traditions and you can re re encounter them again and find the beauty in them and so on. But definitely it is not fun to follow something that you don't want to and you feel obliged and it's Christmas and it's your family. So you are like, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings for Christmas. It's it's a big conflict. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh um, I I think we had it actually last year when we were solving Christmas challenge of a woman who had problem with convincing her partner to spend Christmas with her and they have kids together because he was totally against Christmas. And we were talking about creating your own Christmas 
uh, customs or your own Christmas traditions. I actually think it's way cooler than uh, following the tradition you don't believe in, you know, to try to do something new. I remember that you really wanted to bring Star Wars to the table, literally. I, I, I actually literally wanted to bring Star Wars to the table. And that was the year when I have, instead of a normal Christmas tree top, put a Kylo Ren mask as a Christmas tree top. And I made my own decoration. I also put a mistletoe on him and I put the Christmas lights and actually I... I I lost my Christmas top, Christmas tree top, so I put again Kylo Ren this year because I already dressed my Christmas tree. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. And we have to bring our Christmas movie from last year back onto our uh, Facebook fan oh, page because, Jesus, guys, Jesus. we have recorded an amazing Christmas movie amazing. last year of like, what, five minutes or something? Yeah, I think six, even six minutes of a masterpiece. Like, And it was real. full of plot twists. Oh, yo, oh, yo, yo, yo. And we are, no, actually, it was such a fun to do it. And I think we will actually make a throw back to it. Uh, I, I star as Kylo Ren and Marta stars as Marta. You have to see it. It's a, it's a Christmas Star Wars extravaganza. It's, it's good. It's good. I think it's that one of those diamonds that will be discovered once we are super famous. And, they and will we will <laughs> stop being famous after it's discovered. And they will block us. <laughs> Maybe we should actually take it down in the, from the internet. Okay, but let's go now to the Christmas. Uh, Christmas Question number two, which is, you know it's Christmas when? And 54% of our wonderful listeners answered, when you buy and decorate a Christmas tree. Were you one of them, Marta? Yes, I was one of them. So it's not Christmas yet for me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because I have not bought the Christmas tree yet. I'm actually late bloomer when it comes to Christmas, which you cannot tell because the Christmas live show is actually 7th of December. And you can guess who has asked for that show to be themed because my proposal was the 21st of December. <laughs> <laughs> should be the Christmas uh, but we show. But did, we didn't even know exactly by then if you will be here. Yeah, that's that's true. Because but you made your own plot twist, my dear, this Christmas. Yes, I did make a severe, uh, can you say make a severe plot twist? A big <laughs> plot twist. Severe. This year. <laughs> severe, you know what is severe? Our English. That's <laughs> for sure. That's severe. <laughs> Pain for natives. Uh, if there are any natives listening to us right now, we are severely sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, we are. But coming back to the point, yes. I am a late bloomer when it comes to Christmas. <laughs> yes. And I like to start celebrating Christmas much closer to Christmas than, uh, yes, like right now they start even before Halloween. Uh, yeah. Some of the shops or right after Halloween, that's not my piece of cake. I really start a week or even really the weekend before Christmas. I'm, I'm one of these people that like shame to stay on, close. Shame on you, late bloomer. The the corporations have make no money on you. You know what? Yeah. I actually have to tell you, Marta, I was exactly the same when I was living in Poland. The funny thing is that at my home, we were dressing the Christmas tree many times on 23rd or 4th of December. There mm -hmm. was no Christmas tree decorations in, in, in there were there were no decorations, you know, actually December was quite normal month. Only by 15 you started to feel Christmas is coming because your mother was telling you that now it's time to clean the house or something. And we were dressing the Christmas tree on 23rd, 24th of December. However, when I moved to Denmark, also known as Western Europe, here Christmas starts uh, mid-November. <laughs> because, you know, and whenever they take the um, decorations uh, from Halloween from the shops, they put all the decorations, you know. And it's and the funny thing is, I don't know if you notice, but here in Denmark, if they decorate the street for Christmas, they take the decorations before the new year. Have you noticed that? I have not noticed that, but I will put attention to it this year. And put there could attention. be a good reason for it, because I'm almost never here for Christmas. 
Okay, then you have to now put attention. But imagine, like in Poland, when we decorate, we decorate very, very uh, shortly before Christmas. And then those decorations, we take them down in a second week of January when there is the Three Kings. Three sub- Magic Kings, yes, yes. 6th of January. Three Magic <laughs> Three Magic Kings. <laughs> kings. Magic Kings. And w- <laughs> Wait, yeah. what's bad news? Magic Okay, Okay. back on air. Why are they magic? (laughs) I don't know. Isn't it called three magic kings? How is it in Polish? Trzej królowie, which is three kings, no? Magic kings. Well, that's (laughs) how I thought it went. You know why I started? Three magic kings celebration. You know why I started to laugh? Because when you said three magic kings, for some reason, I understood three magic mushrooms. Okay, well... Uh, uh, Google supports me. Yes, I'm and, sorry. And I'm Google sorry. thinks that it is three magic kings. But at least you had a very good laugh. I had a very good which laugh. Is a, uh, which is a good thing. I had no, I have no idea. I just heard three magic mushrooms. And I was like, and I was saying kings, but I've heard mushrooms. So yes, but we take it down at three magic m- kings. Kings. <laughs> We take it down at three magic kings. So the decorations are there for like mid-January. Here in Denmark, they clean all the decorations just after Christmas. So maybe that's why they celebrate it faster or they just like are very commercial uh, mindset. You won't sell anything Christmassy after the Christmas. So let's just take the whole shebang and clean it. Which is kind of sad, to be honest, because then you don't really have anything to lean on, right? So... uh, so here I already have my Christmas tree decorated because I will take it down just after 1st of January. So, yeah. Number two, you know, it's Christmas when you hear all I want for Christmas on the radio. And that was 23% of our listeners. So this is when you know it's Christmas. Marta? This is when I know it's commercial Christmas. <laughs> commercial <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, because uh, that starts also already in November. And that's why I chose the mm-hmm. actual Christmas. Christmas thing for me is the Christmas tree. tree. Yeah. yeah. And then we had three more answers. And for each was 8% of respondents. So, you know, it's Christmas when... It's snowing, but I think with global warming, that might not be a... uh, You might wait wait a while until the next ice age. Or if you are also on this part of the world that actually never gets snow for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that that sucks. I would recommend uh, some artificial thing, you know, or, uh, yeah, or imagining or a snowball. Then we also have, you know, it's Christmas when shops are full of Christmas candies and decorations, which is actually very, very early here in Denmark. And, you know, uh, it's Christmas when someone asks you, what do you want for Christmas? So, And all I want for Christmas is you. you. <laughs> and now, guys, we will go with the second song and I will disappoint you severely because this is not all I want for Christmas because none of our listeners have actually chose that song. I was surprised that that song was omitted in uh, best Christmas song ever voting because it was best Christmas ever song, not uh, the Christmas that is played the most. That is correct. So Mariah Carey, wherever you are, and I know you were in Denmark just like two or three days ago in Copenhagen, we are sorry, but your song will not be played. Instead, we will play Bing Crosby, White Christmas, which is Marta's favorite Christmas song. And we are back. Yes, and that was a very, very old archive. I think really played from vinyl and then recorded on... Uh, I don't know, something else uh, version of White Christmas, but for me it actually had some sort of a charm because it is a very old song as our technician Julian have noticed. Actually, the song is from 1940, so that's quite some, if I'm using my mathematical skills correctly, which never happens 78 years. Don't ask for validation (laughs) (laughs) from you. (laughs) Okay, I won't. Okay. So, Marta, we have also asked our wonderful listeners a question. Number three. Do you believe in Christmas miracles? Guess what were what was the um, majority? Yes or no? Yes. 
believe it or not, it's a tie. 50% of the respondents said yes, and 50% of the respondents said no. And my question is why? Why people don't believe in Christmas miracles? Because I think we were both the ones who actually believe in Christmas miracles, right? Yeah, I said yes. And then I was asking myself, what actually is that Christmas miracle that we are talking about? Exactly. And I think that this is what it all goes down to. Because uh, I think people don't really, they have different definitions of a Christmas miracle. So Marta, what, what is a mis Christmas miracle for you? So then I, I tried to put myself in a position like Christmas miracles that I was told about as a child were miracles like that the animals start talking. That's a very valid miracle. Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was kind of like that was the story that was sold to me every Christmas. Yeah, that that is the Christmas miracle. So I was thinking, do I believe in this one? And I would say that my belief is limited when yeah. it comes uh, to that part. But then I started to think about uh, these little miracles which are uh, very important in life and I do believe that people can you know change their old their, their old ways they can maybe start talking to someone they have not talked for a while there can be some family reunion and I think that there is something special in that uh, period even though all the marketing is trying to destroy it I still think that when the actual Christmas hits the ground if we are open to it and we come back to the you know root of it and what's actually important for us when it comes to Christmas, I do believe that we can create our own little miracles. I totally agree. I totally agree. And yes, uh, uh, in category of the actual miracles, animals not talking, still one of the biggest disappointment, although I still think that I might be doing something wrong and they just don't want to talk to me. So maybe that's an explanation. Another miracle was always a miracle. How the hell Santa appears uh, at our apartment at the block if we don't have chimney? Anna, age five, of course. So that was a miracle at that time. And then I realized that I don't know if I can say it, Marta. I will say it. There is no Santa. Shit. There is Santa. Where? where? In each and every one of us. Ah, of course. And that's the <laughs> Christmas miracle, right? Because one weirdly looking obese guy with a beard is in every single one of us. I think it's a miracle. No, of course, we know. I know what you mean. Yes, there is a little bit of a Santa spirit in all of us. But when I was at least, I think, until I was six or seven, I believed in actual Santa. But didn't you? But Santa, I mean, there was a bishop. Is, is biscop a bishop? I yes, don't know. it's a bishop. Yeah, so it's an Not actual a biscuit, person. It's yeah. an actual person like Jesus Christ. And, mm -hmm. you know, there is a matter of belief. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Santa? They were both actually yeah. uh, people that lived and they actually did the things that they are, you know, known for. So uh, maybe some of them are less and more believed among people, but uh, they are actual humans that were stepping upon that earth. And now they are in all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's true. But if we are coming back to the very uh, traditional childish uh, vision of actual Santa, you know, coming to us on 24th slash 25th and giving us presents, then that was a big disappointment again. So actually now I see that Christmas usually just disappoints me. Animals don't talk, Santa doesn't exist. What the hell is that? So why do you love Christmas so much if it usually disappoints you? Exactly. I think it's because of the oranges. <laughs> no, I I don't know. I, I just think it's magical. I have a lot of uh, precious memories from when I was a child and it was indeed one of those happy, happy times. Uh, but I actually do believe in th that's a very good question. I do believe in Christmas miracles and I do believe in exactly what you said. There is something that motivates us to do something out of um, ordinary uh, to actually maybe call that person that we had the fight with to wish her uh, Merry Christmas or him uh, to do something uh, a little bit different. It's one of those uh, days when I would open the door because that's actually a tradition in Poland uh, when a homeless person, you know, it's uh, looking for a place to eat. 
um, you have by a custom like a, the, there is a custom that you can you are inviting homeless people. There is always an empty t- plate at the uh, Christmas table. And I, I'm not sure if I would, you know, do it every day, but on Christmas I would do it because, of course, I would be probably afraid on any other day or whatsoever. But you know what I mean. It's a, it's, it is a period that inspires to do a little bit more. So with this, I agree. But tw- 50% of people don't believe in Christmas miracles, and uh, that's sad. So next question was, do you send Christmas cards? Well, I do it in a very limited uh, way. Mm-hmm. So I have sent a couple of, I usually would say I send a couple of Christmas cards per Christmas. So if I'm not spending ta- uh, Christmas with my family, mm-hmm. I would send a Christmas card to my mom and my grandma. Mm-hmm. But it's not a big deal. I'm not one of these people who uh, signs a hundred of Christmas cards and sends them out. No. Okay, because 36% of our respondents actually answered, I send text messages. And I think that this is one of the most common um, means of sending wishes, you know, these days. Then uh, there, 27% said, yep, I do. I'm one of those old fashioned people who still hand write Christmas cards. So there are still people who are keeping up the tradition. And the exactly the same amount of uh, respondents, 27% said that I actually would like to, but I never find time motivation to do it because it actually is a bit time consuming. And uh, 9% responded, haha, honestly, people should be happy if I manage to remember it's Christmas at all. So I, I, I think this is a person who doesn't really believe much or people who don't believe, I hope it's one person, because otherwise I would be disappointed, who don't really believe in a Christmas spirit as such. But uh, yeah, apparently there is quite a lot of people who would like to, but just don't find time and motivation. And I'm definitely one of them. And this year I bought the Christmas cards and I'm planning to do it. But it really took a lot of mental, like, remember to do it, because I always have it somewhere at the back of my head. And then I actually forget. I think I would also like to do it. I think this is great. And people to whom I have actually managed to send those cards, especially that then I do it together with kids and so on, they have been happy to get them. So that would be my motivation. But finding time for it, oof. Yeah, that's If it could be done over Christmas. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's a totally (laughs) different story, right? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I totally agree. And uh, I think it's, you know, because uh, that depends also what kind of Christmas cards you send. If you send like Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from, uh, I don't know, Marta and family, that's one thing. But if you are one of those people who also like to write something that is more mindful, like some personalized wishes that can be one day endeavor. So I think that's that's what's stopping me because I usually cannot just write Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I have to put something more and then it's becoming a, a project, not a task. Yeah. So, <coughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. Ah. Okay. <laughs> yes, all kind of sounds today, guys. You should feel blessed. So uh, we also asked our listeners for the best Christmas song ever, and we got so many different titles. There was only one song that uh, actually uh, got more than one vote, and that was a song, Driving Home for Christmas. So I found it quite interesting because that's a song usually that is... uh, I don't know. I think people who like to listen to it are people who are living in other countries or far away from their family. What do you think, Marta? Yeah, definitely <clears throat> makes sense. Yeah, so actually that is the song that definitely won. And then we got a lot of different uh, answers and propositions. We got Joy to the World, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, so this is Christmas, Last Christmas. Yes, someone put that. Someone likes that song still. Uh, White Christmas, Let It Snow, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, Merry Christmas, Darling. So apparently there is no one preferred 
uh, song like no, no One Hit, however, Driving Home for Christmas One. And we will soon put the Driving Home for Christmas, of course, because this is what our listeners likes the most. But before that, I would also like to uh, tell you guys that we asked question number six, which was what's the best Christmas movie ever? And we got the results, which we will give you after the song driving home for christmas because we will also tell you how to plot twist your christmas using uh, strategies from those movies and we will also talk a little bit about our own plot twists so i hope you will enjoy the reveal of the best christmas movie ever and now marta what do you think about driving home for christmas luckily i don't have to drive far and that's another plot twist of yours but what do you think about the song? I love it. I think it's beautiful. Okay, let's hit it then. It's a beautiful song indeed. Yes, and I was just thinking if I would take a look at the driver next to me, everyone on the highway should be in a high panic because <laughs> they don't know how to drive unless I would be a passenger. But this is one of those songs that actually I always enjoyed. And I don't know, maybe it's because it doesn't have this... Uh, very, um, very commercial sound. It's actually still quite okay. And it has a really nice message and it really speaks to you emotionally. It's not like some all I want for his Christmas Santa, please give me that boy. But it actually uh, speaks about something quite universal coming back to your hometown or to your family for Christmas time, which is always very special. What do you think, Marta? Yeah, I think this is a really beautiful song. And um, even though I would never drive home uh, for Christmas, meaning I would never drive to Poland from here for Christmas because my children hate driving uh, and they would make it not a very pleasurable drive. But somehow the song is just beautiful. Yeah, you can even like listen it to it when you are in a plane. You can just substitute the driving with flying home for Christmas and I look at the passenger next to me and and it's all good but we have promised you to reveal the results of the survey and the last question which was what's the best Christmas movie ever and we have decided to do with those results something a little bit different so instead of just telling you what won and what didn't uh, we thought that we will propose you to make a plot twist in your Christmas time, to spend your Christmas in a bit different way, using inspiration, as an inspiration, those movies that you actually really love. Marta, I and think it's a good idea. I think it's an awesome idea. I think we just owe our listeners just a very, you know, quick and straight to the point explanation. Straight to the point? Yes. Then it's you. <laughs> Oh, okay, because it's kind of your <laughs> definition. Okay, so we just wanted to say what we mean by plot twist. Yeah. So what we mean is just doing something different. So if you tend to do the same thing over and over again and you find that it's kind of boring and you are longing for something more, we are seeing plot twist as this ability to actually surprise everyone and yourself and do something completely different for Christmas that will wake up your Christmas spirit and that will give the meaning to Christmas and that will be like in a movie, you know, suddenly it all looks completely different and we are all surprised and it's all great. I totally agree. And because you could all think that we had our own preferences, we have decided to use your public vote. So basically, all of the movies, all the five movies that we will now present are Christmas movies. That's number one. All of them have plot twists. That's number two. And you like them because you voted for them. That's number three. So, guys, if you are looking for an inspiration to your own Christmas plot twist, Use the movies you love and we will tell you what they are. And actually the number five movie that you have chosen is The Holiday. And I will be honest with you, I haven't seen that movie. So Marta, back to you. So luckily I have seen the movie and I have opened it on my computer because some of you, if you know me at all, you know I suck when it comes to remembering what movies are all about. But luckily because I've I have... seen better. <laughs> <laughs> luckily because I actually have seen this movie a few times, I think that it has a great plot twist for all the people 
who are broken hearted in December. So the plot twist that you could create for yourself inspired by that movie is that you swap homes with someone in another country. So instead of staying miserable home for Christmas with your broken heart, you find another person who also longs for just changing a little bit the atmosphere and so on, and you swap home with them and you find your new love. How does that sound, Anna? Actually, that sounds pretty great because you try and from what I understood, there is a the, the swapping home is not the plot twist is like the uh, the, the the plot setup. So this is the situation and then something happens and you were very graceful not to tell people what happened because you don't want to spoil the movie. Yeah, so I said, yeah, the movie is about swapping homes. Yeah. I am saying that your own plot twist can be mm -hmm. inspired by that. Exactly, movie. because I understand that when they swap the homes, those people in the movie, something happened. Definitely stuff happened. Mm -hmm. But actually swapping home for Christmas is a plot twist in itself. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, that's a that's a good one. So guys, number one plot twist for Christmas this year. Swap homes with someone. Go to another country. Try Christmas somewhere else than you usually do. I think you still have time. What do you think? Definitely, yes. It's only 7th of December. Exactly. So, number four. And I will not lie to you. That's actually the best Christmas movie ever created is Die Hard. Okay, hit it. Tell us. So I don't really know if there are people in this world who haven't seen the Die Hard. And if there are, I would like to ask you to contact me because I always wanted to meet an alien. Uh, but basically, Die Hard is a movie about saving your marriage. So if you want to end your marriage or if you are having trouble in your uh, relationship, instead of going with a regular, yeah, December is the time to break up all the relationships because it's the standard thing that you will read in all those articles, try to fight for it. And maybe accidentally you will also save hell of a bunch of people, become a hero and uh, make uh, the best action movie ever created. So yes, all in all, Die Hard is a movie about saving your marriage and fighting for your relationship in Christmas settings with Euro trash terrorist in a background and a lot of dead bodies. So if you are into some action and thriller for Christmas, that is the plot twist for you. Definitely. Fight for your love. You don't know what it will bring. You might become a hero. So Marta, are you ready for number three? Yes. Love Actually. Yeah, that's one of the movies where you, it gives you a palette of possible inspirations yeah. on how you can create a plot twist for yourself. Yeah, actually, you know, I don't even know where to start. I would recommend everyone who haven't seen the movie to watch the movie. And for anyone who kind of saw the movie and remembers but doesn't really remember that well to see the movie and for everyone who knows the movie just to see the movie because that movie actually, regardless of being categorized as a romantic comedy, is I, I have never met a person who disliked the movie. Actually, everyone finds something interesting in Love Actually. And there is at least how many, Marta? Nine stories, ten stories? I actually never counted them and mathematics has never been uh, my core of genius. Or your friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mathematics, my old friend. Yes, uh, there is a lot of stories. And I think all of those characters are doing something amazing. Actually, that's the movie that is a definition of a Christmas miracle because everyone at the Christmas time goes out of their comfort zone to do something, to fight for something, for love or for something. Some of the stories don't end well or with the traditional happy ending, but this movie always gives me hope and inspires me to try. Yes, that's a good word. What do you think, Marta? I think that this really is something uh, it, we could only take this movie and discuss based on that movie, how you can create a plot twist we uh, could, for yourself. We could make a whole one hour show about this movie, to be honest. So guys, if you are in a need of a plot twist and you only have time for one movie, then 
choose love actually <laughs> because you will get at least 10 ideas huh but uh besides that just choose die hard see last year i had the star wars obsession and now it's die hard and you know why because i haven't seen die hard yet and i think that that's that's how it goes until i will not see die hard i will talk about die hard all the time and this year my daughter is watching die hard with me she said she's ready Okay, she's ready to meet John McClane. Okay, guys. So number two is Home Alone 2. And I think you cannot really explain that plot twist properly if you will not include um, our number one. And number one is Marta Guess. Just guess. Just guess. I, I know what is number one, so I can't guess. It's Home Alone 1. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, your favorite Christmas movies are... Home Alone 2 on place number 2 and Home Alone 1 on place number 1. And actually those had the majority of votes. So I would like to say that it doesn't surprise me because I still love this movie. Marta, does it surprise you? It doesn't really surprise me, but that's definitely not a plot twist that I want in my life. <laughs> but this is a plot twist indeed. I actually think the whole success of this movie, because it is a Christmas movie, is based exactly on that plot twist, on, on that idea that the parents forget one of their kids and leave him home alone at Christmas, on Christmas time. And he's what, eight? Seven. I don't remember the age. He's but, little. <laughs> but what strikes me even little. more that then they forget him the second <laughs> time for Christmas. But you know, that's why part two is on second place, because people are like, OK, it's still funny and cool, but that's enough. You really should have your kids taken away from you. I think in any other country, they would take Kevin to some kind of foster care or family because it's like two times parents have kind of like forgot about him. Although the second time, let's admit, because they were already a little bit paranoid. So they were they were trying to keep him close, but then he just ran to another plane. So here I would blame the airlines. I would say that I do not encourage any parents to actually get inspired mm -mm. and uh, do the plot twist uh, exactly like a hundred percent you know based on the main theme of the movie i don't know do you see any like inspiration for actually a good twist yes i do kevin i think kevin is the most inspirational little christmas creature ever created by the cinema marta i agree with you 100 percent parents please don't try it only in a movie the mother and the father could get away with it normally i think social services would be on your ass if you would forget your kid and go to another side of a country that is not denmark but usa so don't try it but what i always loved about this movie it was not the fact that kevin made all those booby traps at home although that was funny but you know when you are adult you are not laughing so much it was actually the journey of that little boy who was maybe a little bit spoiled, uh, although he had a horrible uh, siblings, uh, but he also didn't uh, appreciate his family. And he had to do so many things by himself because he was home alone for Christmas. And, you know, he was fighting with his fears, irrational and rational fears. And it's a comedy and it always shows me and lifts me up that you know if a little kid could do and take such a great things and take care of himself so can we so this is an inspiration to make a plot twist that it would be something like change your life nothing is too hard if you have a motivation to do it uh, try something that seems impossible that kind of plot twist what do you think marta very good. I'm really, really glad that you could answer that question because I was blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I answered it. But I was thinking about it. I was thinking why I like Kevin because I remember when I was writing a year ago an article about, um, you know, like, why do we even love Christmas? You know, and that's like one of the most cherished Christmas movies ever, Home Alone. It's basically about the parents who abandon their kid <laughs> on the attic and go. So, of course, it, they did. They do it by mistake. But come on, forget that you didn't brought your kid and realizing in Florida, that's a little bit, you know, too far fetched for me. So why do we, we even like it? And then I realized, you know, but this whole journey and actually the journey of the mother trying to get 
to to Kevin, you know, against all odds, traveling with some weird polka band in a van that they look like, you know, weirdos or serial killers, you know, the mother trying to get to him. Like, how many things you can do for someone you love? I think this is a beautiful message in the end. Yes, it definitely sounds so. And we are now at the very end of our show because it's finishing in one minute. Yes. So with that wonderful message of be brave and do something different, we would like to dedicate the last song, which is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. That's my favorite. And Marta, I think we have to say goodbye. Thank you for today, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And Merry Christmas. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options radio show, where we hopefully convinced you that 5 indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! <laughs>